Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm on a couple of minutes early. I just want to make sure this is all working. Uh, yep, I'm just going to check on my screen, make sure it's working over here. All right, we can probably zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to try and get as close as I possibly can for everyone to see. Um, let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, Alright, it's alright, I'm just checking and I need to check, I'll have to check comments on here. Uh, I'm on my, I'm recording with my phone so it's a bit hard to see comments. Um, so definitely make sure you let me know. Uh, I've got my um, computer to the right of me to make sure I can see what everyone else is seeing. I might be able to come in even a little bit closer. Let's see. I, I just want to make sure I'm in frame. Okay, great. Thanks, Donna. Right. Now, I've got that yellow tape all the way around mine. It's called frog tape. Sorry if I'm making one dizzy at the moment. I'm just trying to adjust it. Hold on. Let's go this way with our board so you can see the snail on the other side. A little bit of it anyway. Um, let's put him a bit higher. Whoop. It's a bit low, isn't it? It just might be easier if you can see the snail and what I'm talking about. Okay. Hi, everyone. That's all right, Colleen. Go and work. It's fine. This will be available straight afterwards. Um, a lot of people have been asking about the recording and this is a Facebook Live. So whenever you do a Facebook Live, as soon as it finishes, it's straight away available, pretty much. So, um, uh, and I, I'm not taking it down. I'll just leave it up for anyone. Uh, I'll also put it up on my YouTube as well. So anyone wants to watch it later on? Okay. Um, just give everyone a few minutes to get on. It's right on nine o'clock at the moment. Um, I'll just, I might run through what I've got here. So I've transferred my line art over onto Archer's Hot Press watercolour paper. I, I like the Hot Press watercolour paper because it's smooth. Um, and um, I can get more detail. I don't really like using a rough paper when I'm um, drawing, just when I'm drawing, because I like to get detail. <laughs> and I can't seem to do that on anything rough. So um, that's why I always use a hot press. Archer's is my favorite brand, but in saying that, I haven't really tried that many others. I, I sort of, I really like Archer's, so I stick with it. Um, but yeah, you could be using a sketchbook, you could just be doing this straight off the printout as well. Um, but I transferred my line art across. Um, but yeah, uh, working on the printout would be just as good. Okay, um, and now what I've got here, I've got three graphite pencils. My favourite brand in graphite pencils is Karen Dash Graphwood. But in saying that, I bought the whole set and I've only ever really used three. So <laughs> you don't need to buy the whole set. I always like a light, medium and dark. So um, I also like the way the Karen Dash are colour coordinated. So that as they get a darker graphite, the actual um, colour on the outside goes darker. So they're pretty cool that way. Um, but I also like them because they blend really easy. They're quite a soft graphite. So I like a... 
2H or a H or a light, a medium, which is 2B, that's my favourite, is a 2B. And then instead of the Karen Dash 8B, which I would normally use, I bought myself a set of these Faber Castell pit graphite mat. Uh, and what they are, they're a graphite, but they're matte. So if you use graphite a lot, you'll know the darker, um, as they go darker, they get shinier as, as you put more pressure down. They become shiny, whereas these pit ones don't. They're, they're, that's why they call them a matte. But there's not that much dark on this image, so we'll probably only use it a little bit. So, you know, you probably wouldn't even need that. You'd just go with your normal dark. It's probably not going to be that shiny anyway. So it's only sort of dark in under here, a little bit there, a few bits on the shell. Um, and that's probably about it. So, all right, the other thing I like to use, which we'll probably use on the background, is a something to blend with. So I like the paper blending stumps um, to blend or you could use a cotton tip or you could use a bit of cotton wool. Someone suggested a makeup sponge. Um, no, I don't think I'm frozen. I hope I'm not. I don't look frozen on my end, Odette. I'm having a while, I've got to turn them off to bed. Yeah, definitely. Um, for those in the Creative Bum membership, this will go up inside the membership as well. So you'll have plenty of time and places to watch the replay. Uh, yeah, so anything to blend with. Okay, and then I do have a couple of rubbers. So I've got a kneadable er eraser, which is my favourite. This is Faber-Castell um, kneadable. It's just the right softness and you can put it into any shape you want. And the beauty of these is they don't leave any little bits of rubber behind, okay? But I do sometimes use this. This is a mono, uh, a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. <laughs> uh, two millimeter round, okay? It's got a long name. But um, this, is real, this is good for fur actually, but it's, we might use it maybe to pull back here and there, but we'll see how we go. Just these sort, uh, you can put a bit more pressure down and maybe pull out a bit better, but they leave bits of rubber. So usually if I've used that, I'll then come back with this and pick up the little bits of rubber because you've got to try and avoid doing that across your work, you know, wiping it because you'll end up smudging all your work. Okay. All right, well, I think maybe we'll get started. I might just put those like that over there out of the way. Um, now we want to get this background in. So I, with graphite, I always like to work light to dark. I'm just checking. All right, I haven't got any questions. Okay, cool. Um, so we're going to I work furthest back and come forward most of the time. Okay, so this background, you can't see it all on my picture here, but um, it's got this little bit of a bokeh effect with some circles, which we can achieve that by pulling back out if we want or um, just drawing in a few little circle areas first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up to that. So we're going to go with a 2H or a H, whatever your lightest pencil is, and I'm going to cover the whole background. Okay, with this, my camera is right in the way. Okay, so we want to try and avoid the snail at this point. But we're just going to... Oh, there's nothing um, better than getting some colour down. So even if you go over snail, it is fine. I'm well, not colour, but some something down on the paper. There's nothing worse than working on a white piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get this all over there first. And like I said, you could essentially cover the whole thing with this pale light, with the light value of the 2H I've got, but and remember, you're just working up from light to dark. Alright, 
come all the way down. If you're working on the printout, then you don't have any worry about losing your lines at all. Um, you're just going to have to make sure you bring enough value up against those lines as we're working to make the lines disappear because you can't rub them out of course because it's a printout but I tried to keep them fairly light so I think it'd be all right okay so we're just gonna get that down I want a fairly even coverage. So essentially this value I'm trying to get is, I'll just move this sideways for a sec, is this lighter value in here. Okay, so um, that's our initial first sort of layer. And then I will either use a blending stump, my finger, whatever you have on hand, whether you've got a cotton bud, up to you what you you like to use to blend. A lot of times with the Caran d'Ache pencils, they blend so nicely. I use my finger a lot. <laughs> but I use the blending stump if I'm trying to get a nice, like a really sharp area, like a detailed area that my finger is too fat for. Okay, so I'm just going to blend that down. And by using light layers as well, we can uh, rub out if we need to. Okay, so I'm just going to, again with that 2H pencil, oh, we've got some the cotton bud. The cotton wool ball, I mean, has left fluff everywhere. So I don't think I'll be using that again. Okay, so I'm just going to try and draw in a circle roughly of where I um, might want to have these bokeh effects so just lightly if you don't trust yourself drawing a circle I'm just losing my line there a bit um, you could get something round and put it there if you, you think your circles are a bit dodgy <laughs> Um, this one is going to go up there and then maybe another one around here. Okay. And then we've got a couple more, but we can just pull that out with the rubber, those ones. It's more those lighter ones. I just wanted to sort of mark in where they are. Okay. So again, I think I'll keep with my 2H for now. I might put a bit more pressure down now, and I'm, but this time I'm not going to go over the top of those circles I've just drawn in. And again, don't worry if your circles aren't exactly perfect circles. This is, think of this as a practice piece as well. You're just sort of learning technique on how to build up layers. So you don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, I could nearly even go my 2B here. This is kind of a little bit light still, so. but there's nothing worse than going in too dark too fast because it's really hard to pull back out. Whereas if you're working those light layers, you can just slowly, um, or you can put, use an eraser and pull out fairly easily. Okay, I might give that another little blend with my finger. Now we want the edges of these circles that we've put in to be um, soft. 
but yeah, that's definitely nowhere near dark enough yet, so we need to bring in our 2B. I hope you can sort of see this. <laughs> um, okay, once I start getting darker, we'll be right. Okay, so I'm going with my 2B now. This is the one I use most of the time. So let's get this a bit darker. I'm thinking this will take about an hour, but my time um, predictions are usually wrong. <laughs> so um, hopefully it won't go too much past. It probably will, but we'll see. I'll just keep going till we're done. <laughs> you can see I'm holding my pencil right towards the back of it. It's so I can work on its side so I'm not putting any really sharp marks down my paper of course is stuck down to my desk but um, definitely move your paper around if you think you need to. There is no set direction I need to be doing my strokes in here because I'm just trying to block it in. I want a fairly smooth finish to this. blender in now and try and give this a bit of a blend with it. You should be able to see those circles a bit easier as well. Still trying to avoid the snail here as best I can. All right, and our edges on our circle, remember we don't need them sharp we can be a bit blurry so we can go right around the edges there okay now i'm going to start looking at where it is a bit darker so Let's start up the top here more. I'm still with my 2B. So we're a bit darker sort of through this area. So I'm going to start putting a bit more pressure down. Sort of lighter as it comes down through here. So as I'm putting more pressure, my hand's moving up my pencil a bit more.
in some sort of circular shapes in here as well that aren't quite as dark so we can kind of mark them in as we're going. I'm not too worried, there's a really bright one up the top there. I'm not too worried about that. to get the edge of that shell more sort of circular shapes through here but don't don't worry too much we can pull out with our rubber if we need to edge there and define his little eye which I think that's their eyes isn't it on the snail is that the end of that little long bit <laughs> Let's get our blender again. some circles around here as well so we just mainly want a few circles in that background that are different values it's got a bit of a line through it but like I said we can use our rubber as well Sorry if my hand keeps getting in the way. So we could even, you know, if we wanted to come in and pull out a bit more of a circle here and there. Mm. 
you know, we can just do whatever we want with that. So you could even just have coloured the whole background in, in a value and then bought some, um, pulled out with some rubbers. But we want them, I think the main thing is to have them at different values, so some a bit darker than others. So this, the eye of the snail there, I'm just looking at it compared to what's behind it, the circle behind it and the snail eye is quite a lot brighter. Okay, and I could definitely go way darker here yet. So we can keep building it up until we think we're at the right value. You can, um, if you, I don't have one on me, but if you have a value scale, they're really handy to figure out sort of how dark it is. So it's essentially um, somewhere that you've got a lot of, like you've, you've gone from light to dark in little blocks. And um, then you can, you punch a hole in it and then sit it over your reference image. And that then sort of gives you an idea of where it's a bit, bit darker. Uh, what, what value it should be. I'm just looking at this, why is there a shadow there? It's a bit strange. I don't think I want that, so I don't know why I started putting that in, but... Yeah, I don't know, uh, you probably can't see on... Let me go sideways again. There's this shadow here. And this line here which that's sometimes you've got to, when you're working with a, a reference image, you've got to figure out whether you want that in or not. And I think that's probably something to do with a camera. Um, so I don't really want that in there. So I'm just going to ignore it. Um, there's a bit of a circle down here. So I'm just going through now and I'm just going to try and strengthen where I think it should be darker. Especially around that eye there. That should be a bit darker than what I've got it. And I'm just adjusting the pressure now where I want it darker. So you can see my hands, my fingers are further up the pencil. So I've got more control of pressure. And this is still the 2B. Don't really feel it's dark enough in the background to warrant using the 8B yet. circles in the wrong spot but that doesn't matter either. Okay and then up on here is a bit darker. always good as well look check your reference image and if um, there's a really light area so say on the snail oh, keep putting my hand in the way see how along the top of the snail there is really light so it's a good idea sorry my microphone's falling down it's a good idea to have that a lot darker behind it and it'll really help to make that pop a bit and if especially if you want that area to be where the viewer's eyes is, is going to be so 
that um, a really sharp contrast between dark and light is a great way to draw the eye. Some more darks in. blend. Every time I blend it, it kind of lightens it, which is a bit annoying. I think that one's too light. If you think you've got one a bit light, you can just go over it with your 2B. Okay, all right, and we can always come back and play with the background some more, but I really want to get on with this snail. do this rock at the front first. Just get a bit of colour down, a bit of value down there. So on the line art there's a line here. That's just depicting that really bright area there. So again just with my 2B I'm going to just sort of run over its darkest oh, underneath him here. This is where we'll probably bring in our 8B or our really dark a bit later on. That is, I don't even know what that is on a snail. I should, should research snail, shouldn't I? Does anyone know what that section is? <laughs> it's like a third eye. <laughs> No, how many eyes do snails have? <laughs> Alright, just looking at the darks. I'm just using my 2B for now. I'll come back over those darks with my um, dark, like my, I've got a 10B a bit later. But for now, what is that? This is just a Again, it's a rock, it doesn't matter how accurate you are here. We just mainly want some shadow under him. And that's that light through there. This light there. So I'm going to press hard when I'm pretty confident where I know where I'm going darker. But I will, like I said, I'll bring that darker pencil in. But just for now, we're just trying to get something established here. Like I said, I don't like working on a white paper. So I just like to, quite often we'll get the darks in first, but make sure you don't put dark over where um, you want it to be light because it can be hard to pull back out if you've sort of started to press hard which I am doing on these darks. Marks 
soon, okay. I'm not gonna put any anything down in this really light area. I just wanna get that background a little bit darker. Okay, and now I'm just gonna cover this in my 2B, just a lighter. Just I've moved my hand back down the back of the pencil. So it's a bit of a lighter, um, lighter stroke. I actually don't know if I'm gonna blend this at all because being a rock, it'd be good to have the texture of the paper. This is quite dark on this side. Okay, now I might bring my dark in. Wherever I put it, let me just check comments, make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, you looked up the snails. Oh, okay, so that's a feeler. <laughs> um, Vivian, what's a good brand for a blender? I don't know. I just buy the cheapest blending stumps I can find. Um, they usually come in packs of different sizes. Um, either those ones are a compressed paper, but you get, do get the ones that are like a rolled paper, and I find either work just as good. So, um, oh, you had a paper question near the beginning. Donna, 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 let me find it. Any reason why you don't like Bristol Smooth or Bristol Vellum for graphite? Uh, no reason at all, Donna. <laughs> I just um, I just don't experiment that much, which is probably a bit sad. I do encourage everyone to experiment in my membership, but I just I just really like Archer's hot press water paper um, because I use it for my charcoal all the time and um, so I just stick with it because I, I buy it in the sheets so I always have it here um, so I use it for graphite as well but definitely if you feel um, you've used the Bristol which I actually don't think I've ever used it but it might be brilliant for, um, for graphite uh, so definitely give it a go. So there is no actual reason. <laughs> um, I know this has a bit of tooth to it, which I quite like. So, but like I said, I drawn on printer paper, and it it works just the same with graphite. All right, I'm just gonna, um, but I wouldn't recommend printer paper if you were gonna sell your work. Uh, this is my dark, so this is a 10B, but if you've only, whatever dark you've got, even a 6B, something like that, I'm just going to establish these darks a bit more, and I'm only doing it because I'm pretty confident with where they are. Okay, normally I wouldn't put darks in until I knew exactly where it was going to go, because once you sort of get it in there and it's darker, it is a bit harder to pull out. And I'm liking the texture this paper has for the rock. So I'm definitely not going to bother blending too much at all. Probably, oh, I don't think I'll blend at all on this rock. Okay, but we want to really sort of get our darks in. And that line there where the rock is cracked, and it sort of comes down here, it's a bit darker in there. Now my proportions for like 
where I've put this line and that, it probably isn't exactly right, but that doesn't matter. It's a rock, so not a big deal. So it's sort of darker in here. Again, you can adjust the um, pressure, how hard you're pushing. Okay, so there's some little marks on the rock through here. So we can just put a few little marks with this one. Put a shadow along here. It goes quite blurry through here, doesn't it? Again, there's marks sort of all through here. I'll probably bring, I'm getting some marks done with this um, darker one, but then I'll bring my 2B in again. lights hitting through here we might pull that out with our rubber later this is quite blurry up this end but it doesn't have to be that's just the photo it's blurry okay I might bring my 2B back in now and put some more marks in if I need it I think this whole area needs to be a bit darker Again, there's some lights through there, so I'll try and avoid there. my grandkids up in the house it sounds like a herd of elephants and there's only two of them <laughs> hopefully they stay up there and don't come down here I told them they're not allowed in my studio <laughs> until I come back up later they love to spend time in here especially the my five-year-old granddaughter she was down here before and I had to boot her out <laughs> Because you say, now, you can stay if you're quiet, but of course they can't be quiet, so. Alright, we might just define that little feeler then. Going around. So, hopefully you can see, I don't know um, what paper everyone is on, but you can see hopefully that this is working really well for texture. Um, this needs to be a bit darker through here, this part of the rock. The rock's lighter down here. I need to darken this up a bit. But yeah, having that texture and I'm, I'm being rough. So whenever I'm doing texture, um, I'm always kind of looking, I'm, my eyes always flick back and forth to my reference image anyway, all the time. But I'm also, you know, if it's, if it's a rough texture, then I'm putting like short, rougher marks down. If it's a really smooth area, then I'm probably doing longer strokes and doing more blending. Just going to define that edge a little bit more. So the background will keep nice, try and keep smooth with our blending, but this rock will you know, try and keep rough without any blending. So um, there's those light bits there. You can always come back with the rubber 
if you need to, if you've gone over any of those and you want to pull out some little bits. Through here is a bit blended, but I don't. On, on the photo, it's um, it's a it's a blur. That obviously they've had the aperture set right on the snail, so that um, everything else is blurry around it. But as the artist, yeah, that's up to you to decide whether you want to do that or not. But I'm quite happy having um, all of the rock quite textured. So I don't think I'll apply any blurriness to it, but if you did want to make this bottom bit blurry, then just get your blender out again. I'm going to actually put some marks in there. Okay, now up under here, let's have a look. This is a bit of a darker part of the rock there. Like I said, I don't want to add too much at all up the top here. I like that nice and white. I might actually get in my Tombow rubber and just give that a sharper edge there. But you see how it's left all the bits of um, rubber? So if I blow on it, I can get rid of some, but I bring my kneadable back in to get rid of um, any other little bits. So just always try and avoid putting your hands, like rubbing it with your hand. Okay, I haven't used them. Oh, hi Debbie, you made it live, awesome, your first live. <laughs> um, Donna, shiny second graphite drawing with me, but it's smooth. Yeah, well, that's that should be fine. A smooth paper should still be quite nice. Uh, you just might have to work harder on a, a texture on the rock, but this your background is probably going to be beautiful though, and smooth. So, all right. So you can keep building this up and get it darker and darker to where you think it is. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave mine like that, I think. Oop, really knock my light over. Okay, let's get to work on this snail. So I'm going to come back to my 2B again and um, I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of value over the whole snail, so I'm just going to run my 2B over it all. Okay, and I think I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start at the top and come down. Okay, so let's use our, sorry, that was a 2H, sorry, what did I say, 2B, that's my 2H, just to get a very light value over it. All right, now I'm going to start with my 2B and start to focus on detail. Okay, so just where these lines are, I'm looking for darks is what I'm looking for. It's really light on that top edge. Sort of that line there. So the very top edge 
is really white, isn't it? Which I can I can pull that out with the rubber after. Right, let's go this next line down. So just take your time with it as well. So it's really quite dark on this bottom edge. It's like it's got lines. So if I, th I think the texture is sort of, it's like with fur, I suppose, everything I do, I'm looking at which direction lines are going. I do it with eyes as well. So that's the direction my strokes are going to go. Again, do, go lightly and just build it up. And that's wrong where I've put that. Oh. Okay, I might bring in my dark because I, I feel this needs to be darker. Just in that area there. I'm trying to keep my hand out of it. It's probably just there that's the darkest, so that's probably the only area I'm going to use use that um, really dark, the, that was my 10B. That rubber, honestly. Okay. Definitely lighter up this end. And that edge is light, so we can use our rubber and pull back. Because we built up that background uh, in light layers, it should rub out relatively easily. So if we need a sharp edge there of light. And bring that background down to it as well. Okay. I have to keep moving. I get stuck on things all the time. So there's a really light area there. And there's like a light line there. <laughs> so it depends how much detail you want to put in. And that was really light just there, isn't it? Okay, let's keep moving. Where's the next line? Is there, I think. Again, it kind of goes up to nothing up the top here. Now, I might bring my 2H back because it's quite light through here. So I'm just going to 
give it a layer of 2H through that to try and get to the right value. I think that's not too bad. And then we'll bring our 2B back in and darken just some little areas. So just there I feel it goes a bit darker. And then around here, it's a little bit darker there. Okay, now the next one comes down. So I'm going to use my 2B on this next one. It's quite dark, but I do want to... There's a, a few light highlights just here that need to be left quite bright. So I'd like to try and leave the paper shining through there. Okay, I'm still on. I dropped out for a second. I dropped out for a second, but I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's go this way a little bit. Okay, so my 2B. Let's get that in there. It's a bit darker through here. We might even get out uh, really dark in there too. Let's get that sort of blocked in. Again, it goes light up this end. Now I've got mine a bit wide, I think. Well, it'll do. Okay, I'm going to get my... Um, my dark, so my 10B, wherever I put it, there it is. Does anyone else put their pencils down and then lose them? <laughs> Do it all the time. Uh, Alright, up through here. It's a bit darker. there I think it's a bit darker just anywhere you think it's a little bit darker right on that edge is Okay, and then of course there's a couple of bright, where's that light is there, a couple of lines going up. Okay, next, again, let's get our light one out, a 2H for this lighter section, just through there. And then back to the two, oh, not that one, the 2B. one below it. So 
it's really got some dark happening in it, hasn't it? And some of it goes up into that white. So let's get our really dark again. marks in here it's quite a solid dark through there down again I really I think I've lost my lines a little bit I think through there is that dark there and it's actually quite dark along the edge of that shell there too the 2H in and get some of that light, the lighter part of the shell blocked in. I might mark in my lines before I lose them completely. So this goes a bit darker up through this area. And then up through there. I feel like that one above could be a bit bit um wider on mine. I might just try and bring it down a little bit. And we can also look at our light up the top here as well. So with this harder rubber, oh, actually I might try the kneadable. Let's try and pull the light out. Oops, sorry, just bumped the camera. right on that top edge is quite light there's actually a line down that edge too all right my snail shell is a bit wonky there so I just need to bring it a bit rounder through here Yep. I'm 
just blend that background. So it seemed to have a bit of a point on my shell there. <laughs> Whereas it should be rounded. What pencil am I using? 2B. Actually, it's quite dark there. I might even bring my real dark down. There we go. And that rounds out a bit better. Okay. Again, I'm trying to keep my hands out of this, guys. I'm sorry. It's quite hard working without putting your hands in front of the camera. All right. So that's that light area. Let's get into our dark. So again, the 2B to start with. Just to figure out where it, it's at. Okay, and then we can come back with our, our dark and push that more. It really is quite a lot darker, isn't it? Now, I'm not sure if you have noticed, but um, in the comments, I have a link to um, the Creative Bar Membership Essentials tier and um, the doors for the Essential tier are open all the time, but I've actually put up a seven day free trial for anyone who wants to um, check out what tutorials and that are inside have a go at, at some of them they're a mixture it's probably um, I would say 70% pastel 70 to 80 percent pastel um, soft pastel that is and then um, um, probably 15 or 20 percent charcoal 10 graphite maybe uh, it's all wildlife and nature art. So if you want to check that out for free, definitely follow that link and head over over there and um, have a look around. I've also, if you do decide to join up, um, I also send you an email showing how you can cancel before your seven days if you decide it's not really for you. Uh, which that is fine, of course. Uh, so it is a simple process of cancelling if, if you do want to. Just check it out for the seven days. Um, and even if, if you do want to cancel and you're struggling to figure out the cancellation process, just shoot me an email or message me and I can cancel for you. But hopefully, of course, you get in there and you love it. <laughs> We've um, also got a private community now for the essential tier members. And um, so you can get in contact with me quite easily in there. And I always make sure I share what we're doing, what's coming up, all that sort of stuff. Um, the essential tier, you don't actually have uh, live sessions but you definitely get the recordings of all the live sessions in there all right. so yeah make sure you check that out I'll probably be sending an email out to everyone as well all right let's go with our push our darks a bit more here
that edge is a bit darker there. And again, it's really light, really white up on this top bit. So we'll make sure we use our rubber and get that out of there. Okay, I think that shell is looking all right. Oh, let me check comments. I think I need to experiment with it to get used to it. Ah, <laughs> Diana. Yes, if you sh make a mistake, just don't show anyone your reference photo. Perfect. Oh, wow, Vanessa, thank you. I'm glad you're loving the essential tier. And hopefully you've joined that Facebook group too. Okay, so let's get to the body of the snail. Okay, again, I'm going to look at where it's sort of darker and lighter sort of these it's made up of all these funny little um, marks isn't he so let's get our dark in sort of run through there he's got these Little darker areas here. Actually, we could probably even get that whole area done with a 2B like this. Let's bring in some of these marks here darker. And then I'm thinking we could just use our rubber. So let's have a look and see how this works. I'm just trying to pull out little dots. And then we can bring our two B back in and sort of section around. They like little circles, aren't they? Again, like Diana said, no one seeing your reference image, then these little dots can be wherever you want them. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's look at where else it's dark. So along there. And then 
up under here. Yeah, I think the top there is quite dark. through here is a bit darker again let's get a bit of this 2B down all over it Okay, come back to this now. Again, um, oh, he's fairly smooth in there, so we could use a blender and, you know, blend where it's a bit smoother. But again, he's got a lot of texture on him in spots, but let's just go smooth where it is so there. I might strengthen my darks so get my 10B in this little eye there up here is quite dark so I'm going to push that that's one of the biggest things that beginners um, tend to do they don't go dark enough in the darks here let's get that shell there let's come back to our 2b now Okay, and there is little marks sort of throughout here. It's a similar to what was down the bottom here. Just get our dark in a bit more here. So this is my 2B I'm using. Quite smooth through there. Dark there. Um, and we've got kind of lines here, haven't we? Where it's you can really sort of see some of the texture up on top of these, oh, let me go this way a bit, <laughs> up on top of here, you can see some lines through there. I'll just put a few little lines in there, try and kind of make the shape. Right, now what we're going to do with these little eyes is we're going to strengthen behind to try and get them to stand out a bit better. 
um, and we also want to bring in some whites so we're going to try and pull out a few lights with our rubber top of there and the top of there is quite light I have to pick off all these little rubber bits with my needable that rubber Oh, don't worry if you've fallen behind it is not a problem I I'm usually a fair bit quicker than um, than others especially if you're just starting you're not you know there's no way I'd expect you to be able to keep up with me um, all right let's try and strengthen behind here in my 2b I'm gonna try and darken up the background behind to try and make this pop a little bit more go over an hour we're now at an hour 20 but I feel like I'm getting there <laughs> that's the thing with anything in realism it always um, it always takes a while but that's the enjoyment of it no need to rush because usually once I get to this stage I like to um, start to sit back and look at it from a distance. Because it's not until you sort of get back from it that you can actually see if there's um, any value changes that you need. Like, like I said earlier, a lot of people starting out they don't go dark enough you've really got to have that big range of dark and light especially when you're doing stuff in realism it really helps to make it pop more
And don't just go around the outline of the, sn of the snail and make it darker. Make sure you blend that off into the background. Okay, because you don't want it to look like he's got a um, just a dark outline around him. So I'm just using the 2B again for this. my finger this time to soften some of this background. I find the blender is making my um, my darks go a lot lighter so I don't really want to use the blender. darken that one so now it's time to sort of yeah start to sit back and see if there's things we can improve whether we can go lighter or darker in any way um, we could look at bringing um, more dark in under here um, I might even use the blender there Sometimes the blender's good if you want an area smooth and you're finding you can't get it pushed into the paper enough, then the blender can help with that. So I know I wanted um, a lot of texture on this rock, but in some of the dark areas I would like it pushed in a bit better, especially under the snail here. So I really want to push the dark under there, as dark as I can get it. And then we can bring, um, let me have a look here. So now I'm sitting back, I'm starting to see a few things that need adjusting. This under here needs to be a bit darker. Uh, we can bring in, let's see, I've got a charcoal white, so I might even try that. You could bring in a touch of um, pastel pencil, pastel stick, if you want to bring in some white. Normally, we'll see how this goes, it might not actually even work, but um, no, it's not going to, that won't work on there. Usually, um, the white of the paper is what can come through for the white bits but he's got these really bright little white spots th on him through here that I'd like to try and show up 
So I'm going to use a pastel stick and try and get some whites happening. Not really that bright. But anywhere, usually if I want to strengthen some white, you can bring in a bit of pastel or, or someone I was talking to uses a gel pen actually um, for bringing in some wider areas. So definitely um, that one I don't want in there. Give it a go. Um, you know, it's, it's a good idea, like I said, to experiment if there's things you want to trial. Uh, this is what I said right at the start. Think of this as a practice piece. So don't stress if it doesn't come out exactly how you want it. Every time you do a little bit more, um, you get better. So I'm just going to try and bring in some darks around some of these lighter areas to make them look like they're popping more. I feel like I need to probably be quite a bit darker. To really help those lights stand out more. But that that's something like I said you'll sit back and just look at it over the next couple of days and see if there's anything that's standing out. It's usually you haven't got something dark enough or light enough. It's usually in the values. All right. I need to stop messing with it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna check comments. <laughs> Um, like I said, the best way is to just let it sit and come back to it. The background, definitely not a fan of, they're probably too bright actually, now I'm looking. Let me go, I know this one's supposed to be bright, I've got it in the wrong spot anyway. But it's probably, the when you sit back and look, if your eye is being drawn to a certain area that's not what you want your eye to look at um, then you need to adjust it okay so that could be yeah, too bright that one um, this one could go darker up here like that one there is way too bright same as that one I think I want darker that one 
I want darker. face as much. Oh, a bit of light there. Okay, so I can keep playing with it. I could keep, you know, darkening up some areas if I felt it needed it. Um, but it's not too bad. I think, um, you know, But yeah, keep in mind, like I said, a lot of beginners, um, it's your, your dark and light that they're not, um, you're not pushing it enough. Okay, I might just bring that out a little bit. Okay, so if yours looks a bit wishy-washy, then you need to um, up your contrast. A good way to look at it as well is on it, take a photo of it because I'm looking at mine on my screen now. I've made it completely crooked, but it's all right. <laughs> Trying to move it out a bit. Um, take a photo of it. Um, but I always find if I just leave it and go away, do something else, then um, and I come back and usually I can see things that um, I need adjusting. But now I'm looking at it on my screen here. And now I've changed that background a little bit. I'm, um, I'm fairly happy with it. Probably could darken in here a bit. to stop all right and finish and do it again loved your lesson thanks Jeanette uh, audio is off I do not hear you oh okay um, hold on guys let me try think. okay can you hear me now I think my microphone ran out of battery But anyway, we're finished now anyway. So, um, oh, sound is fine. All right, it could have just been Farley. <laughs> All right, um, just let me check comments. Make sure I haven't, is, um, I hadn't appreciated how much detail Snow would need. Really enjoying this learning experience. Awesome, Wendy, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. And yes, Magella 2B is definitely my favorite. Oh, great, you could hear me all the way. It's just the red light had come up on top of my microphone, so I've t taken it off, actually. Um, all right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And like I said, I'm going to keep this one. Uh, the, the recording will be on Facebook, and I'll put it up in my YouTube. So no rush, just enjoy it. Um, oh, that's what I have to do. I'm going to pull the paper off because it always looks better once you pull this yellow tape off. <laughs> Let me put this over here a bit. Um, don't you love that pulling the tape off, how it ends up? Gives you that nice clean edge. And um, the yellow can be really distracting. Let me just keep that stuck up there. And then, of course, don't forget to sign your work. Okay, there we go. Doesn't it look so much nicer once all that yellow is gone? So, 
Oh, great, Chris. Your first time. Wonderful. Well, don't forget, if you, you probably haven't been able to keep up with me, go back, rewatch it as long as you want. And also, I've got that seven-day free offer if you go to for my um, Creative Barn Essentials tier, the premium tier, which includes all the live sessions. Um, that's not open till July. But the Essentials tier, which has all the tutorials, all the live recordings, that is open all year round but I'm giving you a seven day free trial at the moment don't know how long I'll have that up for um, so if you want to go and check it out go and have a look um, now's the best time because you get to look at it for free for a week um, and you'll also receive an email from me with a video on how to cancel before your seven days is up so risk free no pressure if you can't figure it if you want to cancel and can't figure it out let me know and i'll do it for you um but yeah it's a really great opportunity to go and have a look um at what's in there and and have a go at some of the tutorials all right um wonderful leslie i'm glad that's going to improve your work that's awesome because that's the whole idea. And like I said, the more you do it, you learn off all different artists. I do. I, I go to workshops myself, still, always. So, um, all right, would make a good stress free card and slow down on it. <laughs> that would be brilliant. Yes. All right. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. Continue your day. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, thanks again for joining me and I will see you all or talk to you all very soon. Bye guys.